Hello everyone, my name is Marisa Bellani. Welcome to the second episode of the RT series, a program proposed by Maris World and supported by Roman World. Roman World is a contemporary art gallery which fosters the talents of young and emerging artists through a program of exhibition. Maris World, on the other hand, is a brand new venture that aims at helping artists and creatives to successfully drive and develop their career, mainly through one-on-one -on -one sessions. We will also soon be offering workshops, group workshops, and more live um, events like this one, um, hoping to stimulate debate and inspiration through the creative community and its audience. For this second episode of RT series, I'm introducing the work of Jack Laver, his inspiration, and the symbolism behind this practice. We will discuss themes like the natural and the unnatural, the abstraction of the landscape and the human form. I'm very pleased to host the discussion at Jack's studio and to be surrounded by his work. I met Jack through his application to the summer art residency that we organized in partnership with the Columbia, where Jack has now his studio. The Columbia is a creative hub and a hotel located in the West End of London. The Columbia gathers many different creative realities. Hi Jack, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing, Marissa? I'm good. So Jack, you are a musician and an artist. You work with, in printmaking and painting. You explore the, the fringes of these mediums by creating experimental works that uses techniques that are commonly perceived as error to create images. So, and you have completed a BA in illustration and visual medium at the London College of Communication and previously completed a foundation diploma in art and design at Kingston University. So that's for the education part. So I, um, as I said, I've met you during this summer 2020 uh, to uh, when you started uh, residency at the Columbia and I had the opportunity to uh, come quite often in your studio and to see your art in progress and what struck me is that every time I was coming to your studio or also the rooms that you colonize upstairs <laughs> uh, you <laughs> you were always telling me when I was looking at the work that you were like, I oh, yeah, but I don't know how it's gonna look like. And I was like, okay, but the more I was coming, the more it looked quite consistent throughout your work and they were looking consistently in the same vein. So I gathered with time that what you meant was that, um, for instance, when you use ink and you pour it on the surface, you never know how it will spread in what like how it will react with the other chemicals that you use could you so there is a big element of experimentation and chance in the outcome of your work can you take us further in your process how you make a work and what makes the outcome uncertain yeah so i start the works by laying down glues as a surface and then i paint into these with inks and what really makes them different each time is like the set of ingredients I use. I call them ingredients, different chemicals. And if I have like a balance of one to the other, changing it about, it can create like a whole new body of work sort of thing. Like the way the marks are made, I kind of have to realize that I'm doing it differently each time because before I kind of did it by chance, but now you have to kind of regiment exactly how much of each thing you use. And so this creates like an unpredictability in the drying time really, because when I'm doing it, I know what I'm doing and I have this preconceived notion of how to make the work. But then when it starts to dry, all these different things... But the drying happen. time is quite a big element because I remember as well when you had to move actually room because the drying was not happening. Yeah. In my old studio I had a corrugated roof and this meant that things dried so quickly. And it was kind of... I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing because now I have these like days of drying time sometimes and it means I can kind of control what happens, I kind of, I like to step back and let the medium go in its own way. 
but also it allows me to control much more than it was previously. And the first time you came up with your with this way of doing things, can you talk about it? Yeah, so I kind of I misunderstood um, my tutor, who was a printmaking tutor and screen printing, and he told me to use these glues as stencils to put on the screens and then print over them, and then you'd have this kind of blank area. So I did this on paper instead, and painted over with these inks, and then the ink, the the glue went completely bright yellow, and I was like what is this? I need to do more of this. And then I think I got impatient and started going into the glues when it was still wet and then it became this fluid sort of... And that really kind of started this idea of like um, mistakes and like kind of you... Yeah, exactly. The you start keep was like the going more into trying to, almost trying to make mistakes, like yeah. bringing the uncertainty into your work is a big element. I'm kind of testing what can go right and what can go wrong. And if it goes wrong, it could be the best thing which has happened sort of thing. Yeah, so far, yeah. <laughs> it seems. Um, so, w like, we are with, uh, like, with some of your works here, and uh, they are kind of, we could say they are abstract, <laughs> uh, but they are also representational somehow. And I remember, like, the day I, like, I really, like, started to understand your work, and I, I called you, in fact, and I was like, oh, is it, like, you're representing pipes and subterranean, like trying to, with the glue, the idea of the glue, trying to hold everything together under the surface. And, and that's how our conversation really started with, with your work. So um, how um, it's kind of a kind of stru complex structure organism. How can you uh, describe this? Like that's what we were talking about the natural and the unnatural, like the system of pipes. And yeah, so I see them as kind of this network or system, as you said, like these veins, roots, pipes. They're quite, they look very natural. But it started off when I was researching into how like man made structures are influenced by natural forms. Like these pipes are so interacted with roots on the subterranean, as you said. And this kind of sparked the idea. And I began working it in printmaking and using stencils like wire and string. And it became the whole body of work seemed to be connected and there was an energy towards them. So I, I brought it in naturally to this medium and it's developed into many different ways. I now do kind of like sculptural 3D works. And um, these protrude the, the surface. And these, in my head, are like the roots where they come from the, you can like, you can really feel them as a physical object. Also, I've, some of them feel like a forest scape where you're like looking through different branches. And then I've also got, going back to the subterranean, the works like Tangled Paths and Corrupt Conduit, which are like, they really feel like this mesh of man-made and natural organisms together in this one world. Yeah, it looks like, like the veins in our exactly. body where everything is like kind of... But I like how that system can re represent also like the roots they is such similarities in those two things like the microscopic becoming something on much a bigger scale yeah like yeah it's uh and then another topic that comes often in your work is the topic of light and darkness and as a first impression, and that's the first impression I also had and shared with other people, is that your work looks dark. And, um, but the more time I've spent with your work, the more um, it came to me that, like, obvious that it was actually light and quite bright and optimistic. It was more about going from darkness to light rather than light l brightness to darkness so it's like it's more of a way out of darkness than a way in which i find very interesting especially in your new works that you call like the skin series which is these works made on um, a transfer like it's a technique that basically you create the the sheet and it's transparent and they are meant to be hung in front of a source of light or even better a window and then we can witness the work going from in the morning if it's in front of a window being very light to to change its color to dark at night and i cons and this cycle constantly like coming 
in and out. Uh, can you uh, tell me what interests you in this duality of darkness and brightness? Yeah, so really it's kind of the in-between is what I call it. The states where it's constantly moving from one thing to another. I find this happens when I'm making the pieces with like the drying time. It comes from being this pool of like inks and thick glue and then ends in quite like a rigid but malleable just sheet of transparency. But then when I display it, it's also constantly evolving in the way that it's hung, as you said, in front of the light source. The way that you can discover new things as the day goes on and then it can like slowly fade away. It's never just stagnant. I think that's what I like so much about it. Yeah, it's, there is a, a spooky element in your work. It, it seems like it changes as you s look at it. I want it to feel It's alive. not so stable. Yeah, yeah it's a exactly bit alive. <laughs> it is a bit spooky. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, and then before when we were talking, you were also explaining about like the development, like the period, like the process of developing mm. the work. And that can also refer to photography. And in fact, my background, for who knows me, is very much uh, photography and I ask you and then if you were influenced by photography and then well I was in your studio with you and people there there were like many people raised that question so what what is it is it yeah. influenced by it I mean it's not directly influenced by it but I think what people pointed out to me and I now see is the, like decaying of film strips or film negatives even, are, it's quite a similar process because the chemicals I'm using, they decay and they change the colours and they take things away. And it's almost as if there is an image behind there, but it's been so thoroughly decayed that it's just, that's all that's left, this uncertain image. <laughs> Floating. <laughs> exactly. Um, is, there, um, is there anything else you want to say on this topic? or No, I think I can. Okay. Okay, so then I'm going to move on to the inspirations behind your work. So um, when we spoke about like briefly about abstraction and symbolism as well, are there artists or movements that have influenced you or been a source of inspiration for your work on that level? Like, Yeah, so early on it was really the expressionists by Edvard Munch and Leon Spilliard the kind of like melancholic landscape which they create and their rendering of figures it kind of like transformed the way I saw things as you would say I guess and that was like a big early influence I was kind of trying to replicate this in a way early on in my studies but then as I moved into this medium and started to find my own voice it was Anselm Kiefer was a big inspiration his use of mediums just there's like lots of natural mediums or ones which represent natural forms and it's just I remember going to an exhibition and there was this huge, just lead, and it's, it feels as if it wasn't even like completely attached to the canvas, so it's like looming over you, and it's intimidating. The scale he works on is unbelievable, and like the, the amount of materials in there, when you get up close, it feels like a completely abstract image, but you walk back, and in this exhibition, loads of them had horizon lines, so it started to create a landscape, and this is one of the reasons I like the landscape and the abstract in, intention. Yeah, there is one of your work, um, I don't know if we have uh, the slide of, but I remember looking at it and asking you, is it a landscape? Although it doesn't look like a landscape, it's very abstract. But then it reminded me also of uh, Kiefer. Yeah. And, uh, but there is also a lot of, um, it's very like Kiefer's work is very much influenced by like m the mystical and the religious. Is there... Are, are, are those topics that you look at and influenced by? Um, I mean, in part, the mystical is... I kind of like the whimsical landscapes and things like that. So there's a, an element of that, but not so much the, the religious or the philosophical, as yet. <laughs> as yet. <laughs> uh, any other artists or movements that have... Uh... Yeah, so there was the Gutai movement, who I've been looking at recently. And it, it's a Japanese movement, and it translates to embodiment or concrete. And it's, um, it's very performative, the works. And as I was saying about the evolving, they're very much like that. The work they enter into the gallery very rarely comes out the same. There'll be something 
which arises, which changes the way the work looks or there'll be a performative aspect to it. And this one artist in particular, Takasada Matsutani, excuse me if I said it wrong, um, he uses vinyl adhesive in his work, so glues as well. And I, I found this out recently and it really, it's, it's inspiring to see someone using a similar medium. And uh, well. yeah, way of making things. And yeah, and you, so you mentioned that exhibition that um, um, inf like had an impact on you and I, again, we were discussing one day here in your studio and I was reflecting on the fact that often like going to see a real life exhibition, like going to visit a show can have a very big impact on whether like you know even as a as a person but especially if you're a curator or an artist working in the arts um you you might like there are some like basically career changing exhibitions and you mentioned like that exhibition you saw with Ansem Kiefer but is there any other that has had an impact on your work you reckon yeah there's one recently called not without my ghosts at the drawing room not without my ghost ghosts yeah <laughs> Um, and this was like looking at kind of spiritual influence in art and the first room had lots of surrealist drawings um, and they were kind of all following this automatic way of drawing, they call it automatic drawing and uh, it's kind of similar to free association and it's, it's just letting the, your subconscious guide the way the marks are made. And I realised that this is what I do in lots of the images I make, I let the my subconscious completely guide where I take the mark. I start with this preconceived notion, which they didn't, but it, I then let it develop into this com complete other thing and let the marks guide. So that was an interesting one to kind of, I'd already known this, this way of working, but to associate it with my work then. And that way of working might also explain why you saying that there is a very big element of uncertainty uncertainty in the outcome of your yeah, work for sure. although like for me as a viewer I'm, I find them similar by series but for you as the maker you're thinking well I don't know how it will look because it's the uncertainty then develops into whole new bodies of work it's like this one error I can just I have to pick up on it and realize that there's something there and then pursue it and then it will become a, a new a completely yeah a completely new thing and um, you, in fact, you have developed like so. To go back to the different uh, series, there are like those like three-dimensional works that you make with paper, and you kind of like scull them, and then pour the glues and the ink, and then there is the reaction. Then there are the um, the skin series, and then is there anything else that you are willing to develop now, or things that you have in mine too yeah so it's really the skin series as i call it is the one which i'm looking at making more of an installation piece i guess i want to bring the pathways which are already a theme in my work into a physical thing and use the skin series to kind of guide people around the room so they can kind of enter into the pieces and look through them because they're transparent you could see different pieces through a different lens and also having like i'm using decay so you can there's actual like windows in the work where you can look through it kind of finding different ways to to view the work i guess is and guide the viewer um i've started developing this and there's just kind of making them monumental in size so they can't just get round them it kind of takes the whole experience you into want a people new level. to basically be walking into the work pretty much yeah just kind of transforming the whole way the the gallery would look so it feels more like how the studio looks also bring in like multi-sensory aspects like the smell of the studio the sounds which i make or yeah. i'm playing is i think that should yeah, because you're a musician so you were you told me many like actually yeah. in our first meeting almost you mentioned the sound element it's something i've been trying to bring in for a while and i have in small ways but it's never it's never got to the final process so hopefully soon it will. I think it's because when you're in a group show, the sound has such a big influence over how you see the other works. And if it doesn't link with the other work, it just doesn't make sense. So I need really like the whole room to yeah. create the sounds for it so it can really respond. And you mentioned once, I can't even, it's not, c not clear anymore in my head, but like 
I remember once you were describing me a new work you were thinking of, and you said, I would like it to dry in the middle of the room. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like how I'd make, I want to have, this was influenced by the guitar works, because they make works in the... So uh, adding a performative yeah, element. Yeah, so it'd be, I don't even know if I'd want the actual aspect of me making it, but just having it drying in a mold in the middle of a room, it would bring the smell, it would bring the kind of whole process, and then you'd have something which completely changes over time. And then maybe it could be hung after it's been dried in there. So it could be just like an ever-developing exhibition. Uh, yeah. So basically, so just to re like for me to uh, recap, so you want like things that like art that are more an installation that can be experienced by the viewer through walking through them, and then there would be a s um, um, element of sound and eventually smell as well in exactly. them to just like just talk to all senses. Exactly, that's the aim. It's quite cool. <laughs> um, so I think we've. Um, We've covered a bit everything, so what's next for you then? We are going to do a show together in uh, early... Everything is very uncertain <laughs> <laughs> at the moment. And so it's going to be probably February 21 uh, at the Bakery, which is that new space, which is a collaboration between the Columbia and Roman Road. And um, so, yeah, that's it, really. Thank you, everyone. And... Um, do we have any questions? No? Then... Thank you. Thank you, Martin.